All right, let's get into some CSS styling over here. Um, first order of business is let me do something about this body color. Um, I'm going to start off with a CSS selector. Now, what you don't see over here in CodePen is that this uh, every HTML uh, page has uh, some core elements it needs to have, and one of those is the body element. And the body element represents everything that's wrapped up in the visual portion of the page. Um, we don't have to go into too much detail on that uh, at this point, but let's just say that there is an element called body. And here we have our CSS selector. We start with the squiggly braces and here we go this is how this is the most basic css selector you could have and in the middle over here is where we actually put our styles our um, what what our attributes going to be and what their values are going to be so with that said we have body and we'll start off with background now what we want to do for the background is add a color so let's start off with a color name. So browsers, uh, so CSS can uh, send colors to the browser to render in a number of different ways, both with hex decimal, browser names, RBG, I mean browser names, color names for the browser, and RBG values. Actually, if we do CSS colors, we could see right here on W3C schools, um, here are some options. This right here will show you. They have here's the hex and here's RBG colors. And I think somewhere else, yeah, in their list they have this is the colors page, but they also have CSS color values, which goes over all of the different ways you could do. And um, basically, there's well, there's a lot of different ways. Probably the most common historically has been uh, hex decimal. Um, RBG is great. Um, a lot of people like that. RBGA, that includes the alpha channel, so that means you could change the opacity that if you needed to. Um, HS, uh, HSL and HSLA are also options, and then probably the easiest one is um, color names. So let's just go with uh, the color name for starters, and we'll say the background color, I want it red. Yeah, there we go. That's Rambo-esque. Um, I mean, me-esque, <laughs> but uh, well, uh, there you have it. So we have a red background for the body. That's great. Um, let's now style the header, the about me. Why don't I say H1 now, because that's what we're targeting, this H1 element here. And I'll start with the squiggly braces. I'll add some space. There you have it. Um, now we want to attach a color to not the background of H1, but to the actual uh, H1 element. And we could do that simply by going color. And now this time, let's say instead of going um, as, you know, uh, black, because black's the default. Because if I go black like this, I'm not changing anything. Why don't I say white? Ah, and there you have it. You see how all of a sudden now it's black. So very cool. Now, um, but instead of doing black, let's act, I'm sorry, instead of doing white, let's do it with the RBG value. Um, we could go R, B, or I keep on saying RBG, RGB. Um, and then we'll put the two parentheses over there, not parentheses, but uh, you see what I'm saying, not to be mistaken to the squiggly braces, just the regular braces, and white would be what, zero, zero, zero? No, that would actually be black, right, because that's the absence of color. Um, it would be two, five, five, two, so that would be the red. Notice how now that thing is completely red, like the rest of the page that we have. Um, but now we had full red, no green or blue, then 255, here's the mixture of red and green, yellow, and then 255 for our blazing white. Awesome. Sound looks good so far. And let's attack one more element. Um, we're going to do P. So we're going to do the same thing, except now let's do it with hex color. Hex color, um, I don't know, some people are good at remembering stuff and they got everything down. As for me, I always 
go and try to refer to something. There's plenty of hex color editors and that kind of stuff. But just to simplify our lives, we'll go to CSS colors and let's find a hex color that jives with what we want to do. Um, well, let's not get get too crazy. And I think gray would be just fine for our paragraph text. So I so what I did, of course, you just see I selected this all and behind the scenes, I look at my edit button, I'm copying it in there. And then I'm going to go what? Color and hex is in there. Bam. See? Cool. Notice how it did not edit my, um, my anchor tag because my anchor is something else. It's just, it's just A. So um, that, that's it. There you have it. We have two items that um, are both colored over here. Um, but let's do something else. I want to show you a little bit of grouping, um, CSS grouping. Let's just say that we want to italicize um, both the anchor and the H1. So how are we going to do that? Well, here's how we're going to do it. Because what I'm saying here is I want to give two different elements the exact same value. And how I'm going to do that is through CSS grouping. So let's go H1 and then comma, space, and then A, because that targets our element over here. And of course, we still do the braces. And what we're going to do now is let's go for um, font, weight, I, is it, no, 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 it's font, uh, let's go font style. Yeah, it's font style italic. There we go. This is exact value that I want. So, oops, let's go back and we go not font. It's font style. And then we go up. Oh, that's not quite what I wanted. But there we go. We have the italic. So italic and bam. Let's see what happened over there. Now our about me is italic and our anchor is also italic. Pretty cool.